Inevitably, we run into challenges on a job, even on a four small aqua block pondless. You can see in here, we knew we were gonna run into some roots from this elm tree, which is not a big deal. But the bigger issue is this slab of concrete, which appears to be much thicker than just a four inch slab. So we got the concrete saw out over there. We're gonna go ahead and cut the perimeter and we're gonna try and knock this thing off. So. I wonder where Kobe went. How does it look down there, Kobe? Yeah, it definitely was a septic tank. There's a, if you look here. Flash night. Yeah, there's a, see right here? This is where they used to put the pumps and everything. There's the pipe. Pretty interesting, that's for sure. Good morning everybody, Chris from Team Aquascape. The gang and I are out today and we are gonna be working on a small pondless waterfall. It's a four small block pondless waterfall that we're gonna be creating today. I am standing currently in the backyard. This is our canvas for the day. Let me turn the camera around and show you what we're gonna be doing. So there used to be an old swing set that sat right where this fake grass or this outdoor carpet used to be. That has since moved into the back corner of the garden and we are going to redefine this stepper pathway leading you back out to there. But our pondless waterfall is going to start here here, kind of twist and turn and empty into a four block pondless right about here. You can see I've got a bed line already painted out. It'll go around this beautiful mature Chinese elm tree. We're gonna strip out all the grass in here. We're gonna bring in about four yards of topsoil, build a nice little meandering waterfall. It's gonna be about probably 16 inches tall max height as far as the waterfall. It's gonna be more about the movement than the sheer height of it, which will be a really, really nice waterfall. It's kind of one of the things that it's very similar to the one that you have seen us build in our sandbox studio if you haven't seen that video already we're gonna go ahead and put a link in the description below and go ahead and check out that video so you have a frame of reference so first thing to do is we are going to unload the rock because our truck is currently on the driveway then we can get our truck out because our soil is sitting outside waiting to be delivered so that that way we can get it nice and close so I'm gonna go ahead and unload all the stone that we have or that we brought for the project get the truck out of the way then grab soil then we're gonna really focus on stripping out all of this sod since I have an empty truck and then we'll get the sod into the back of the truck so Let's go out front and see what the gang is up to. So here's our access. We've got a nice four or five foot gate. We already have some mulch dropped off by the customer. You can see that the rocks are now getting unloaded by the guys. We're gonna have about two and a half tons of rock on this project. So we brought plenty more than we need. We've got a nice size of boulders. We've got some 18 inch ones. We've got some 12 inch ones. We've got some little four to eight inch softball size stuff. So we wanna make sure that we have the nice size selection to choose from, which always strengthens the overall design. But this is where that dirt that is sitting in that truck is going to be dumped. So we need to go ahead and just get this rock unloaded get the truck out of here so that we can dump the soil and then we're gonna bring our truck back and start getting the rest of the side that we cut out in there Corey how are you feeling today good you ready for it yeah nice little pondless waterfalls yeah should go quick enough nice did you guys get all the rock unloaded yeah we got the whole bin unloaded half of this so I think this is gonna be all the rock that we need nice now we're just gonna bring it back right now okay All right, so the guys have already got all the rock unloaded. We're gonna go ahead and start cutting the grass out of here while Jack backs the truck up. We're gonna cut all this up, get it in wheelbarrows and get it out of here. You can see we've got our pile of rock behind us. We left a few on the truck, which we can always use for backup in case we need it. Here's our pile of product. We have four small aqua blocks that you see there. We've got three one watt lights. We have a two to five adjustable flow pump, which is going to be a great pump for this small little waterfalls. Of course, we've got our pump vault there. We have our 12 inch spillway, and then we have our 25 feet a pipe and we should be good to go. We also have a 10 by 15 liner and a 10 by 15 or a 15 by 15 piece of underlayment and probably about 20 bags of gravel. We've got two different sizes. We've got the three quarter here and then we've got our bigger gravel there. So we've got 10 bags of each and we also have a handful of plants that are located back there. There's a Japanese maple, a couple cedars, and then maybe a couple things that the homeowner has already purchased. So like I said, first sort of business, get the sod out of here and then we're going to go ahead and lay out our aqua blocks, get the aqua blocks in and then we are going to take that dirt, put it up, start building our berm, and then at the same time, we'll start moving this dirt into the back as well. 
So real quick, one of the things or the ideas that we live by here at Aquascape is working smarter, not harder. And that is all about having the right tools for the job. Now we're not perfect, but we're learning and we always try and get better every day. And this piece of equipment, this switch and go body is one of the things that we implemented a few years back and have since made some mods to, to make it a little bit better for us. But we love this 14 foot long landscape style body. And this is a bed that can be rolled off the back of the truck or stay stationary on the truck. We just love the versatility. It dumps, it will repel off the bed. You okay in there, Jack? How come you don't just use the one in the cab? What? I don't know. All right. So anyways, you see Jack here, he's going to lift the bed up and then we are going to roll it off. The reason we're doing this is this way we can roll the wheelbarrows right into the bed of the truck. We're not double handling material. It already has to go into the wheelbarrows. Why would we pull it out of the wheelbarrows to throw it into the truck? If we could just wheel those wheelbarrows into the truck, it'll make our lives so much easier. Again, just one of those things where we found a tool, we found an applicable use for it. We found a tool that improved our efficiency on a job, saved us some of the labor, and that's exactly what we're trying to help teach you guys. So we've got our four aqua blocks laid out. Jack went ahead and traced out the perimeter of the four aqua blocks. He went about four to six inches outside of the dimensions of the two by two aqua block setup. That way we're not cutting it close, but we're gonna go ahead and dig this with a couple of guys. We're gonna throw all that dirt back in there. At the same time, we're gonna have one person put together the aqua blocks, and then two of us are gonna start schlepping all the rest of that dirt that you saw on the driveway back here to start building our burn. Okay, so inevitably we run into challenges on a job, even on a four small aqua block pondless. You can see in here, we knew we were gonna run into some roots from this elm tree, which is not a big deal. Um, they're a very vigorous grower, long lived tree. So we do have one that we're gonna shave out of here, but the bigger issue is this slab of concrete, which appears to be much thicker than just a four inch slab. So we got the concrete saw out over there. We're gonna go ahead and cut the perimeter and we're gonna try and knock this thing off. So it's adding a little bit of extra time. We have all of the dirt back here now which is great it's going to compact a little bit but you can see where that four yards got lost and created this really subtle berm in through here we did not bury or will not bury the root flare of this elm tree because that can be potentially harmful to that tree so we'll end up tapering all that stuff back we'll probably build a little bit of a retaining wall I'm using some of these boulders to retain the soil from the berm against to prevent it from going against this big Chinese elm the rest of this rock will be built for the waterfalls as well as we'll probably have a few little retaining stones over here to help flatten out that terrace. I don't know, what are you doing? Is that the axe, the sledgehammer? Hit that thing. Oh, that's what I was asking, are we doing it this? Use the axe for the lab. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we know what Kobe's IQ is now for the day. Um, all right, it's a long day, it's hot. All right, now hit the concrete. Hmm, I wonder where Kobe went. How does it look down there, Kobe? Yeah, it definitely was a septic tank. There's a, if you look here. Flesh night. Yeah, there's a, see right here? This is where they used to put the pumps and everything. There's the pipe. Pretty interesting, that's for sure. All right, so we've got the Corey and Jack show over here. They are going to be building the waterfalls today. They're working together. They are setting the first frame rock, which is actually the biggest rock on the project, but it's also one of the more crucial ones to set because this one's really gonna set the tone for the waterfalls and all the rocks surrounding it. So trick and challenge with this is you don't wanna set that thing too high, the spill stone. Yeah, Corey, I would bring that left, or sorry, that front right point towards me and kind of spin that rock a little bit more. Now, okay, good, that's good. Now move that whole rock this way, six inches. So this is, you know, one of the more crucial rocks. That's good. And then take that, exactly, spin it back towards Jack a little bit. Keep going. happening with my phone or my phone this camera um, 
team. So anyways. All right, so we've got the waterfalls essentially built. I mean, the guys are working on putting the spillway in. Luis and I are going to just start finishing around the outer perimeter of these rocks. Luis is working on lights. The waterfall will start back behind this blue rock right there between those two rocks. So it'll almost be a hidden waterfalls, but we want that water to appear almost as if out of nowhere, giving it that natural spring fed look. Then what's really, really cool is we are going to place a rock between this rock and this rock to get that pitcher style falls, but the water is also gonna travel back behind this rock to the right and go through a series of small V style waterfalls as well and deposit down into that bottom pooling area before it goes over that bottom waterfalls down into the basins. Adding a little bit extra dimension doing that split waterfalls, making it a little bit more unique to itself. We have the liner to do it and we just felt like we could be a little bit more creative today based on the rock selection and the way everything was going together. So love, 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 love how it's turning out. Who I don't love, 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 and I hate, hate, hate is that kid right there. Oh, you know, that's a lie. That's true, it is a lie. But. We're cruising right along. I just wanted to give you a little progress update. The plumbing has been buried. The spillway is gonna go back over into there. So we will show you that process and we'll show you how all that gets hooked up today. Okay then. How's that look, Jack? A little off. Yeah, a little off, but we're gonna fix it. And what about the other way? Yeah, so our goal is to get that bubble at least over here a little bit more. That way that spillway tilts down just a little bit to aid the flow of the waterfall. Right. Hey guys, so right now we're, we just got done leveling off the spillway. Uh, right now we're trying to hooking up the MPC fitting to the pipe and then we're gonna hook the pipe up to the spillway itself. So right now what we're gonna do is just, I'm gonna take my hand and I'm just gonna lightly just go in a circular motion around this just to see where, where I have to cut that hole at for my bulkhead fitting for my spillway. And go ahead and make sure that you have just a little bit of slack here. That way the liner isn't super tight when you install it. All right, and then Jack's gonna get started. <laughs> It's a big milestone. We've got the mulch going down. So if you guys remember the 20 products and 20 steps, this was one of them. And it was one of the final steps. So you see we've got a little bit of edge work left to do on the waterfalls. I, I wanna leave that until the very last thing when the thing is up and running. So we can really see where that water is going. Make sure that we don't need to foam behind any of these rocks to get that water to go where more where we want it to go. We've got a handful of rocks still left, but once we get this thing mulched, we are good to go. I've got a little bit of foam that's drying in that little corner right there, but other than that we are so close we've got a little bit of cleanup left to do and we have to run some electrical conduit for the electrician and other than that we are home free so super excited and we're making good time we're trying to beat the weather yes the weather i know it's a shocker for all of you guys watching our videos that we are running into some kind of rain but it is what it is so i guess we'll keep going So the last little bit is happening. We've got the conduit getting buried, but feast your eyes on the newest Team Aquascape creation. What a beautiful pondless waterfall. I love the split waterfalls up in the middle. I love how it just appears from behind that rock right back over there where the water starts everything out. I love the movement that we've got going on in here. It's super, super neat how everything turned out. We've got about two and a half tons of stone. The biggest rock on the project was that one right there, and that's Gosh, probably a 250 pound boulder. Everything else is in that 100 to 125 pound range. You can see we were able to very gently terrace out that berm, preventing that volcanic look, but I just love how the waterfalls turned out. Just absolutely beautiful. I love the little split waterfalls, how it comes around that middle rock. Just absolutely beautiful. You guys did a fantastic job. Corey and Jack killed it. Luis killed it. Kobe killed it. Just looks beautiful. You can see we've got our fake rock lid right over here that is covering our 
our vault top and you can see how it just kind of seamlessly fits its way in there that thing will patina over time and probably get a little bit more into that tan color like that rock up there but it doesn't look out of place which is what i love about it but i just love this waterfalls i love the edge treatments there's not too much rock there's just enough it just looks absolutely incredible I think what's neat too is how every time we have to hide or conceal that spillway and it's sitting underneath that flat piece of flagstone but it's actually sunk down to almost the very top of the spillstone that's right there. I love how it just kind of twists and turns its way out of there. It's just really, really neat how it kind of just blends perfectly into that berm, that hillside if you will. I just love the change in direction of this stream. Love some of the cool unique things that happen. Like I said, that split waterfalls but I also love this. It comes off of that rock but also works its way down over that little frame rock there just beautiful put a little bit of a bib liner down here to get that traveling water all the way back in here in the reservoir just absolutely gorgeous jack nice job buddy thanks you too nice job so listen we managed to beat the weather we're gonna go ahead and beat our deadline which was the rain which is probably gonna be here in the next 30 to 45 minutes we've got a little bit of work left to do some cleanup i'm gonna go ahead and go over things with the homeowner i hope you guys enjoyed this episode a very simple simple pondless waterfall not unlike the ones you've seen us do in the sandbox studio and on some of our other projects but it really takes this space to its fullest potential we utilize the canopy of that chinese elm while also incorporating in some new landscape plants you can see the japanese maple behind me as well as some low growing junipers to kind of fill in and eventually really tighten up that space and bring the softscape to life. So I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Again, it was two and a half tons of rock, 25 feet of pipe, a 10 by 15 liner, 15 by 15 underlay, four small aqua blocks, a pump vault and a two to five pump. Oh, and a 12 inch spillway and jack and three one watt lights and a 60 watt transformer. So it turned out fantastic. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, feel free to drop us a comment in the comment section below. We'll be sure to get back to you. If you liked the video, great. Give us a thumbs up. If you didn't give us that thumbs down but let us know how we can improve we always want to get better and keep you guys coming back to the team aquascape channel thanks again till next time sign off